congratulations. I mean, that must feel good to get a win like that after such a long layoff, specifically. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, the layoff doesn't bother me much. Like, it's more important to come in healthy, I think. And it's not like I ever stopped training. If I had, like, not trained for nine months and then came to fight, I think that would be different. But I was training the whole time I was out. So uh, the layoff doesn't really bother me. But um, just coming in and having a good performance, is that's that was the main goal, was just to relax, control my breathing, control my emotions, you know, be in control of my mind, and uh, we knew that would lead to a good performance. Yeah. Mars being susceptible to the knockout at some stages of her career, did you feel like if you were going to finish this fight, that's how you'd be able to get it done? Yeah, I mean, I, like, everybody knows, like, I love ground and pound. All my finishes are TKO finishes. I think I have, like, nine of them now or something like that, so, um, uh, I'm, but, like, we were just talking about like I I'm just now really learning how to use the power in my hands I have a lot of power in my punches it used to be I just take them down knock them out on the ground but now I'm I'm really learning how to throw my hands and then next is going to be my legs right so uh, n next thing we're working on is making my kicks just as powerful as my hands just as powerful as my takedowns so yeah Last thing for me, it's been seven fights now where it's been alternating win and a loss back and forth. What do you have to do coming off this win to, you know, build momentum and get a winning streak going here? Uh, just, you know what, just keep trying my hardest and keep doing what I'm doing. You know, this is the UFC and I'm fighting women in the top 10. So to come in and say like, oh, I'm just going to steamroll them all, I think is a little unrealistic. <laughs> you know, like, I think it's more, I think it's better for me to just focus on having good performances and being the best Lauren that I can be. And if I could do that, if I can just be like the best fighter I can be, I can walk away from any fight, win or loss, and hold my head up high and be proud of it. But if I start really focusing on, I have to get a win this fight, I have to get a win, it just makes me tense up and get all nervous and then I end up not having a good performance and then I'll end up with a loss anyway. So I kind of try to put that kind of stuff out of my mind if I can. And that's really what's different now about me than when I first got into the UFC. Can you think it through that finishing sequence because you land the really nice uh, uppercut and obviously you finished off the knee. you kind of think it's what you were seeing there? Yeah, uh, well she scored the takedown in the second and uh, I was really happy that I was able to get up. Like that's kind of been the bane of my career, right? As I get taken down and I can't get up. So I was super happy to be able to get up, but um, I didn't know how the Georgia's judges were going to score that second round, so it could have could have gone either way. And so it's always like, fuck, you're going into the third. But I kind of knew, and my corners really told me they're like, she's going to be looking for that takedown again, probably pretty early, to cinch, you know, cinch it up for. Her. So fucking get that uppercut ready. And we did work that uppercut a lot. So um, we expected her throughout the camp to be looking for the takedown. And so, yeah, we worked that uppercut a lot, but to land it, just timed it perfectly. I was like, yes, <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. And uh, the knee like wasn't really planned, but what else are you gonna throw there? You know, you're in that sick ass clinch position with her head right there. Make sure both her hands are off the mat and do it to it. That was a really nice finish. Where would you rank that as among, you know, the other wins in your career? Uh, you know, all three wins that I've had in the UFC just mean a lot to me. Like, the first win that I got was my first UFC win, and it was a finish, and we got fight of the night. Like, that was one of the best days of my life. Uh, when uh, I fought Barb Honchak on the tough finale, that really holds a special place in my heart because that was one of the first times I was able to really stay calm and centered in a fight and enjoy the fight and, like, uh, control myself and then this is going to be another really special win for me my corner uh, I, I moved my camp out to Houston for this fight uh, Alex Cisne has been my coach for a long time um, when I was in Houston he took me through Legacy he took me through Invicta we're 4-0 and together going into this fight we're 5-0 and together now my original coach Pat Applegate who took me through my first eight fights was in the crowd tonight and so for him to see me win like they're they're just all really special man these are the best days of my life Another person in the crowd were actually the Trump family are sitting front row. Oh, and cool. One of them brought their daughters. I think she was kind of taken aback. Somebody else said there. that. Yeah. yeah, that she was like horrified. Like, you're at the fight. <laughs> what did you think is going to happen? I don't know. Like, this is kind of what we do, you know? <laughs> you know, judges had it 1919 going into the third. Did, did you they? feel and did your corner say that you needed to look for the finish or were you just looking for a solid round? Just looking for a solid round. And actually, um, they were like, yeah, we won the second. I, I felt confident going into the third, but you can never take your foot off the gas pedal you know what I mean but just for me it was like man like uh I, between rounds I was like man I don't feel that heavy feeling that I have felt many times in my UFC career the bright lights and the crowd and everything I've gotten a lot of adrenaline dumps and then you just go out there it's like being in a bad dream where you can't move quickly you're trying to punch and it's like slow motion that's terrible and uh just to be free from that today i was like hell yeah <laughs> you know like i and i knew going into that third that i was doing my best and that i could walk away from this fight 
with my head held high no matter what way it went. You called in a couple of names post-fight. Any idea on when you might like uh, one of those matchups? To go Next to? week is fine with me. No, uh, <laughs> really whenever. Like, uh, I, I really meant it. I'm trying to make some money. I, I want paycheck after paycheck. I really want... Um, just to experience as much as I can while I while I can, you know, fighter. We're here for a good time, not for a long time. So line them up. Let me have a good time, you know. Today was a really good day. Losses are super heartbreaking in this sport, and uh, it could just as easily be me in the locker room crying right now, wishing that I'd done something a little bit different and wanting these moments back. And just thank God, it, thank God it's not me tonight. But um, you know, I've lost before. I will lose again at some point. Hopefully, I'll win again at some point. And uh, I just, you know, I want to have all these experiences while I can. One day, I'm going to be 60 years old, buying my ticket to sit in the crowd, reminiscing about the days that I got to be in the cage and wishing I could go back. So I don't want to waste this time or waste this gift that I have. It's, sure. it's pretty important. For the people who may not have heard, who are the names that you'd like to fight next? Uh, I'd like to fight either Alexis Davis or Roxanne Modafferi. Uh, maybe someday I'll get a rematch with Caitlin Chukagian. Uh, Jessica I would be a good matchup. Either of these ladies fighting right now, Pudilova or Shevchenko, they're just, there's just a shitload of good matchups, to be honest with you, really. At, in the flyweight division, there's a ton. Carmouche is fighting Shevchenko. How do you see that fight going on? Fuck, I don't know, man. Could go anyway. Yeah. Uh, to be honest with you, Carmouche is literally the strongest person I've ever met in my life. Like, uh, when she gets her hands on you, it is like a vice. And so we'll see. Valentina is super, super, super fast. Um, her stand-up is just sick. And, and Liz has just been doing so much grappling lately. She's such a good grappler, and she's so physically strong and imposing. And I don't know if you guys can think of somebody that has, like, a better mindset than Liz Carmouche. Like, nothing gets to her, you know what I mean? So... Uh, it's going to be an awesome fight, and, and I'll be watching next week. It's pretty impressive that she's here with her sister this weekend, too, even though she's got a t big title fight coming up. How cool. Yeah. And um, Chris Cyborg was, you know, is one of the faces of, of women's MMA, and she's been for, for a long time. It looks like she's no longer with the UFC. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious if you had any thoughts on, on that. No, I mean, I, I like Cyborg. Every time I've ever seen her in person, she's been really, really sweet to me. She's one of the most feared women on the planet, and I don't think anybody can take that from her, no matter where she fights or where she goes or what people say about her. Like, nobody can ever take that from her. She's a legend in this sport. She always will be. Thank you, Lauren. Congratulations. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>